our Lord Jesus Christ. On this day, the church begins its holy season of prayerful and penitential reflection. Our attention is especially directed to the holy sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. From ancient times, the season of Lent has been kept as a time of special devotion, self-denial, and humble repentance born of a faithful heart that dwells confidently on his word and draws from it life and hope. Let us pray that our dear Father in heaven, for the sake of his beloved Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit, might richly bless this Lenten tide for us, so that we may come to Easter with glad hearts and keep the feast in sincerity and truth. Please either remain standing or kneeling.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the garden he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Behold, now is the favorable time. The 
Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished and not yet killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not like, be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
come to find us, even in the dust. Amen. Dust and ashes. Ashes and dust. Today is Ash Wednesday, that day in the church when many have their foreheads smeared with messy ashes. And when the pastor says, remember that you are dust, to dust you shall return. This year's Lenten season, our theme is going to be the theme of God's love. Oh love, how deep, how broad, how high, beyond all thought and fantasy. Over and over again, the Bible talks about God's love in such wonderful, descriptive ways. Yahweh, Yahweh, a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love for those who fear him. But today we talk about God's love that reaches down into the dust. Remember that you are dust dust who shall return. There are a few scripture passages from that Genesis reading we heard a few moments ago that I'd like to repeat for you to get them back in your ears. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living creature. And then after Adam and Eve had sinned. To Adam, the Lord God said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Therefore the Lord God sent Adam out from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. So from handfuls of dirt and dust, God made a living human being. He created Adam and Eve. He took lifeless dust and breathed into it the breath of life. It was nothing apart from God. It was just a hump of, a hump of clay, dust blowing about. But with God's word added to it, it was Adam. It was you. It was me. Because of sin, they and we always return to dust. This dose of reality is traced upon our foreheads, and we live with it every single day. God calls us to repentance. That is, God calls you and me to recognize, if you will, to remember that we are dust dust we shall return. Throughout the Bible, dust and ashes is a sign of repentance, a sign of recognition of who we are before God and of God's great mercy toward us. There's no doubt, though, that dust, dust and ashes, ashes and dust, evokes an image of unease, a recognition of death. Doesn't matter if you're talking about the mushroom cloud of dust and earth from a nuclear bomb, or seeing the dust from the World Trade Center, or seeing the dust from the fires. There is something about this that says, we are all in Babylon. 
we are all looking in some way or another at Jerusalem torn down to rubble. Kings and queens, presidents, bakers, butchers, candlestick makers, we all turn to dust in the end. But it doesn't end there. Out of the earth you were taken, but you are dust, to dust you shall return. While it is true that we are that dust that we inherit, the death that we all face because of our first father, Adam, Jesus Christ has come. Jesus has come in the form of the baby, in the form of the new Adam, born from the dust like you and me. As we hear in 2 Samuel, there is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap. You are dust, and to dust you will return. But God's love reaches down into the dust and muck of our lives and lifts us up, even as Jesus was raised from the dead. God takes our death-filled lives and washes us clean and gives us new life, real life, life that is abundant and full and free even as Jesus is free in Him. And so, because of the one who staggered fell on his way to the cross, his face pressed into the dust and dirt on the road to Calvary. Because of him, you have forgiveness. Because of him, you do not end as dust. That is not the end of your story. We trace this upon our foreheads, but we don't simply trace anything. We don't trace a coffin on our foreheads, do we? It's the cross. Smudged, sometimes hidden, sometimes hard to even see, but it is the cross. Because it is through the cross and death of Jesus that dust-filled ones like you and me have life. Or as we hear, high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. Rejoice this day, for you have died, and you now live with Christ in God. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. We rise and sing the offertory together.
church office sometime this week to go to our website to look at how to give electronically. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of the sinner, but rather that we would turn from our evil ways and live. Turn us again, O oh God of our salvation, and let your anger cease from us. Spare us from every evil to body and soul. Look graciously on your church and preserve the gospel among us. Renew us in this penitential season to strive against the desires of the flesh, to grow in the joy of your salvation and to look in love and service toward our neighbors, especially those of the household of faith. Look graciously on our nations and its leaders, all civil servants, those who protect us and work for the common good. Drive away all disease and fear from us. Grant peace, we pray, O Lord. Behold, in mercy, all who are sick, who suffer, and who rejoice. Be with all expectant mothers, all whose labor or work is dangerous, the unemployed, those near death, and those who mourn. Give comfort to us who are dust and must return to dust, that a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to offer himself as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom Thank you. 